Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I hope everybody's doing good. If it's uh, afternoon that you see this video, good afternoon or good morning, wherever you find it, whenever you find it. If you found this video, there's a good chance that it was not by accident, but a divine appointment. I know in the title that you see tonight, it might sound political, but I'm actually looking at this through the lenses of the Bible. And this video is going to be about salvation also. So not just what's going on with the current political environment in America, but I also have uh, a message for you about salvation. And that's why I tell you that if you do find this video, it's very possible it's not an accident, that it's an appointment from God, okay? <clears throat> I take these videos very seriously when I make them. I do them with purpose and with planning. Sometimes they don't always come out perfect. Sometimes I have audio and video um, glitches that come up, internet connections, volume issues, you name it, it happens, you know. And it's, to me, I look at that as, you know, there's an enemy out there that doesn't want me doing these videos. And there's a lot of Christians that have all different kinds of distractions and technicalities that they encounter all the time. Um, I'm not to say, not to say that normal people can't have those too. Other people that aren't talking about the Bible can't have technical difficulties. Of course we all can. But in my experience of doing, um, Bible studies online, I've never had disruptions like I've had when I've talked about normal things. Okay. Things that affect, um, Satan's kingdom, ransacking his kingdom, which is what I like to do. I always seem to get interference and disruptions. It can come in the form of, of glitches, internet connections, audio, people, you know, things like that. But let's, let's get with this. The first thing I want to say before I start talking and getting into a few scriptures and talking about the title tonight, this is not a politically motivated video, okay? I watched... Last night, I watched Donald Trump's um, announcement about running for re-election in 2024, and I paid very close attention. I, I listened to the whole thing, and um, it was a rather lengthy speech, but that's okay. I like listening to Donald Trump anyway. So I was intently listening, not because, not because I'm a fan. I am a fan of Donald Trump, but not because I'm a fan but because when he speaks and other world leaders are speaking, they have my attention because I'm a Bible student and I study Bible prophecy. So they have my attention in this regard, okay? And so it's twofold. Yes, I was very interested and pleased that he's running for your re-election. But this video is not about that. This video is about um, two things. About a poll that I made earlier today, but also... Um, what I heard Mr. Trump say in his speech last night that to me was very prominent. And if there's a Bible teacher out there, a Bible student or a Christian, um, I would just ask you to, to uh, pay close attention to what I'm about to, about to tell you that I observed in the speech that might be of interest to you, that might be of interest to you, okay? Um, this is my own theories, my own hunches, hopefully, God is showing me something, right? That's kind of what we hope as a uh, Christian. We want God to lead us in our life and show us things that, you know, maybe he doesn't show everybody else, okay? But I want to highlight something in the speech last night, which I thought was great, by the way. Um, and listen, if you're a Ron DeSantis fan, or if you're voting for, would vote for someone else in 2024, it's okay. Like I am, um, you know, that's your prerogative. And I just ask that people that support John, Donald Trump just, just respect our position as well, right? Um, that's all I ask, you know, for that. I mean, I love Ron DeSantis. I think he's a great man. But my hunch and my gut feeling tells me that uh, right now is not his time to run. Even if he does run for president, it's not going to be his time. Um, and time will tell if I'm right or wrong about that. But I don't feel like it's his time. I feel like that he is, DeSantis is in his lane right now in Florida and he's crushing it over there. He's doing an amazing job. I love Ron DeSantis, okay? 
Don't get me wrong. I love Ron DeSantis because I'm a conservative. You will find most Christians are conservatives by nature, okay? If you're not, someone calls himself a Christian liberal, then we might have to fact check them, <laughs> okay? But uh, let's get to the Trump speech. This is what I want to highlight. Towards uh, three, I would say three quarters of the speech was when it was completed almost, about three quarters of the way through or almost finished. Uh, he mentioned something that caught my attention as a Bible student. And it was about elections and about how elections, um, you know, obviously we have a big problem in America with our elect electoral process. The Democrats think it's humming along just great, of course, because it's all in their favor right now. You know, the way they've got things going, the way they keep the polling stations, um, you know, to where we don't know who the winner is um, that day, which we should. <laughs> Okay, things like that, you know, and, and then we won't know for some days later. And then, of course, you know, in a critical race, of course, it's a Democrat that wins, you know, right? Nobody questions it. Nobody, pro I mean, you know, we protest it uh, peacefully, but we're not happy about it. Okay, so Trump was talking about elections and he mentioned the elections in France. Okay, this is where. It got my attention. All right, and I'm going to explain why in a minute. But he said that um, in France, in the elections over there, everybody goes and they vote and they tally up the votes. And then when the votes are finished, it doesn't take very long to spit out a winner. And then everybody goes home. So he, he was wishing that it was more like France's um, voting process, you know, where... Um, we could be like France and just vote and then the, everything's tallied up and it's done. Um, to me, it remains to be seen if those elections in France are fair or not, because I don't know that Macron is a, is a big popular guy in France. I mean, to me, I don't see a great track record on my, from my perspective for him, but he won the elections for, for um, the next term in France. So, he, Trump did not mention Macron's name, but he said, um, he, he just mentioned him symbolically, and he said, <clears throat> which is a good friend of mine, by the way. Trump said that in a speech last night, you know, so obviously the French president is a good friend of Trump. I didn't know this. This was a surprise to me. I know that's who he was talking about, and that's what got my attention. And that's why I put in the title tonight that Trump has a very good chance to win re-election. Not just because of the giant disaster that we have in our country right now. And everybody came to me last night when I posted that Trump knocked it out of the park in the speech. They were like, everybody's discouraged and, and, and dissatisfied with the electoral process. And I, believe me, I understand where you're coming from and I get it. They're cheating like crazy and we know it, okay? Believe me, the Trump campaign knows it too. Um, but, but with that said, it has to be God's decision if, who, who, all right, God controls who are the kings of the earth, okay? He raises kings up and he puts them down um, and he replaces them as he wills. It says that in the Bible that he does that. It's in the book of Daniel. He raises kings up and he puts others down. So with that critical piece of information, we know that God ultimately decides who the kings of the earth are going to be and presidents, prime ministers, mayors, governors, you name it. They're all there for a certain reason, whether you like them or not. Okay. So the reason why I said this in the title, it's up to God if Trump is going to be reelected. But I would say after listening to that statement that he made last night about Macron being good friends with Macron gave me uh, an indication that it's very possible he, he will be reelected in 2024. Am I saying he will be 100%? No, but I'm going based on a, a gut feeling as a Bible student that it's very possible. Hi, Sister Diane. Good to see you. I hope you're doing well over there. I hope it's not too late for you tonight. It is getting dark over here in Idaho, and boy, it's going to be cold tonight. It's going to be, woo. It's already cold right now, and it's like, almost 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And usually 
it gets really cold about three, four in the morning and it's, I'm not even close to that. <laughs> so yeah, it's cold. I can't wait to get out of here next month. I'm getting out of here to some warmer weather. Okay. Now, someone, people might ask me, David, why as a Bible student, would that statement be important to you uh, about giving Donald Trump a chance of re-election in 2024, being friends with Macron? Now, he didn't say he was friends with Macron, but he said that he was a good friend of his without mentioning his name. But I knew who he was talking about because he talked about their elections and the person that won, which is a good friend of mine, by the way. Go back and watch the speech again, okay? Now, Dave, the people say, David, why, why would you place Trump's chances of winning re-election on being friends with Macron. Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you're thinking that because I'm getting ready to answer that. <laughs> all right. First of all, well, let me back up a little bit. I'm going to answer the question, but I have to back up just a little bit on um, people are already thinking when they watch this video, some people are thinking um, Trump was a big proponent of the of the V. He's a big proponent of the V, the V, this, you know, and everybody knows, I mean, most common sense people know that we, we want a choice about what we have put into our body, right? Like we should have a choice that should not be forced on us. And, um, Trump was a proponent of the, of the V. He was not a proponent of making it mandatory. He said choice. So people are turned off by Bible students. I said, some of them are turned off by him promoting the, the V, okay? And look, that's that's between you and God, and if you are, and, and I'm, I'm not a proponent of that at all. I never was, and that's something that I never agreed with <clears throat> because I know that those, well, I don't want to get this video censored, but, you know, you can go look your, for yourself, and you'll know that there have been a lot of people that have expired off of it, and it's not cool, and I don't like it, and God's going to reveal everything in the end, okay? But I'm going to fast forward to this now, okay? You can choose who you want to vote for. I, I am all about freedom of choice, like, as far as elections go. Like, you know, it's it's up to you. You you vote your convictions and your morals, and if you love God, you want to you wanna vote for who, who God would want you to vote for. It's not a sin to be patriotic, ladies and gentlemen. It's not a sin to love your country. And the reason why I say that is because there's a lot of people that think we need to be focusing on the kingdom of heaven only. But I will say this, until the kingdom of heaven comes to the earth or we go to, we go to be, in, be with the Lord someday, the Lord has entrusted his people to do the right thing, to vote for people with morals and, and their convictions and those things that God calls an abomination, we should be involved in our country and we should be voting those things down and standing up and speaking up like, like John the Baptist did, Elijah, Moses, St. Paul, all of them, right? Now, they, they're, they're, they're from Israel. They love their country. You know, I love my country because... I had a lot of relatives in the past who've served in the military and, and they love their, uh, their country as well, just like me. And they, there was a lot of God fearing leaders that we had in our, in our nation that love God. And, and so that's another reason why I love America. I don't love what it's becoming. I don't love this evil antichrist spirit that's taken it over, but it's not dead yet. Okay. It's not dead yet. Now to answer questions directly about why, why would I think that uh, he, he uh, Donald Trump has a chance to be reelected based on um, this revelation that I had last night in his speech about being friends with Macron? I'm going to send you a link right now, okay? Let me refresh my laptop, and I'm going to send you a link. And I'm not going to spend 20 minutes building a case on this, but I am going to show you a couple of things really quick, as quickly as possible. And then I'm going to move on to the poll that I made earlier today. So let me do this really fast. I'm going to put this in comments. This comes from nowtheendbegins.com, okay? Pastor Jeffrey Greider or Bible teacher Jeffrey Greider. I don't think he likes to be called a pastor, but people call him pastor because he has Sunday services on his website and he's like a pastor. So, you know, Jeffrey, if you're watching, I mean, you know, whatever you want me to call you, you know, I respect you a great deal. 
He is a King James Bible only Bible teacher. And I respect that too, because I feel like the King James is the most accurate English translation on the planet. With that said, <laughs> for some of my blood bought born again group, you might have known already, but I am I have enrolled in the Hebrew University in Jerusalem online courses, accredited courses, to learn ancient biblical Hebrew, and I start next month. It's a nine month course. And this is this is not something I decided to do on a whim, but God um, just to confess to the body of Christ for a moment. The Lord called me to do this years ago, and he also called me to learn Greek, and I put it off and put it off and put it off because it's a lot of work, and I'm, I got lazy about it, but um, I was convicted recently about it, and I decided to fulfill and not run away like Jonah. I decided to fulfill this, so God be with me, Lord be with me. I know that he will give me the, the wisdom and the knowledge that I need to pass and get those credits, but, but he's the one that called me to do it, so I'm trusting him to help me finish. There's reasons for it, but I'm not here for that. The article that I put in here for you is I want you to know, based on my studies and what some other Christians feel about this, um, I am not a person that is trying to guess the identity of the Antichrist, the son of perdition that's coming in the seven-year tribulation. That's going to happen in this generation, by the way. I'm building a case, so please be patient with me. Um based on some of the articles that I've read and the cases that other Bible teachers have laid out. Emmanuel Macron, to me, is a number one leading candidate for Antichrist, the son of perdition. The Bible says, just so that some people understand that might be watching this video for the first time, uh, Paul says that there are many Antichrists in the world. Not just the son of perdition that's coming in the future, but there's many in the world and as someone that doesn't know the Bible very well might say, well, what does that mean? The Bible says that people that deny Jesus Christ as Lord, uh, that he came from God to save us from the sins of the world, that they have the spirit of Antichrist in them. Look no further than your mainstream media. Look no further than most of your politicians that are promoting abortion and, and the Sodom and Gomorrah movement and teaching our, 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 young, our young children all about the, the just wickedness and perversion. And you, they have a spirit of antichrist in them, ladies and gentlemen. That's against God, okay? So there's people with the spirit of antichrist in them, but there is this one man that's going to come forward and be the, be the ruler of the world for a short period of seven years. And these people that run over to Egypt and get on, on the fake Mount Sinai, they, want, they have an obsession with controlling people. They like to control people like you and me. They want to control people like you and me, but they can't. They're not able, they're kind of like, eh, can't quite get there right now. They're not able to do it. They, they're, in, in no uncertain terms, they're, they're not shy about telling you they want to, okay? But they're like, yeah, this is close. They can't quite do it. They keep telling you they want to, and they have a lot of influence. They can ruin elections. They can do a lot of things to make your life miserable, but they don't really have all that control that they want to yet. And God's aware of all of this, you know. And he's gonna he's he's gonna tell those those elites like um Klaus Schwab and all the Yuval Harari and all the, those people. I'll give you what you want. You want to control um, the world population? I'm going to give it to you for a while. But since you love controlling people so much, I'm going to give somebody, uh, give you somebody that's going to control you. And it's going to be the son of perdition. It's going to be the Antichrist. And, and they're going to love this man. I mentioned this in the video the other day. They're going to love this man to death, but it's literally to death. <laughs> you can figure that out, all right? But, but Emmanuel Macron, to me, is the leading candidate that I see for Antichrist. Could it be somebody else? Absolutely, yes. And I'm not obsessing over it. But as a Bible student, all right, that's my disclaimer here, I pay attention. Not every Christian is paying attention. Some kind of pay attention, some a little bit, some more than others. But I'm paying attention a lot. <laughs> all right, I pay attention. Why? Why do, I, why do I want to take that extra step and pay more attention than some other people? The reason why is because 
I want to go out and when I see when God shows me something, if he's showing me something, I want to warn the body of Christ. I want to warn the lost like I'm I have a mandate to do before God. You know, we're not supposed to be silent, Christian. We're supposed to be out here warning people what's coming. You're going to be really sad in heaven someday if you you took your little your little talent that God gave you and you buried it in the ground and you didn't do anything with it. You're, you're not going to be very happy with it. You're going to be pretty... You'll be, you'll be saved. You'll be in heaven. We're going to get to that in a few minutes, okay? But let me build this case about Trump and Macron. Didn't know they were friends. I had no idea. Did not know that at all until last night. So, if... This is a big if. If Macron, the leading candidate for Antichrist, if that's him, and I'm not saying it is, but I'm saying there's a good chance it might be, it would make sense for Donald Trump to be reelected. Why, David? Why? Why? Because Jared Kushner, Donald Trump's uh, son-in-law, <clears throat> helped orchestrate with the um, Saudi guy. <clears throat> What's his name? Uh... Uh, Ben, Ben Solomon, Ben Solomon. And probably, uh, I don't know about Pope Francis having anything to do with the Abraham Accords, but I, I believe Pope Francis is involved in the Abraham Accords now, maybe not when Trump was president before, but, um, they, with this, with the signature of a pen, with Trump's signature, signed the Abraham Accords into existence. And when he left office, every all the world leaders that did not go away, they all want to be a part of the Abraham Accords and modify it to way that the, the way that they want it to be. Okay. Now, just for some people that are not paying attention, I know a lot of you are. Don't get me wrong. I know that there's a lot of people paying attention, and I, I don't need to name names, but I know that you are. Um, Benjamin Netanyahu is now the Prime Minister of Israel again. And guess what? He is a big proponent of the Abraham Accords. Emmanuel Macron is a big proponent of the Abraham Accords. Donald Trump is obviously a proponent of the Abraham Accords. Now, David, it doesn't matter if Trump's president or not, they're, they're still going to do the make the Abraham Accords happen. Yeah, but there's one little component that I was I was looking at about that that makes sense about Mr. Trump coming back into office. They're literally like they have made gold coins and and coins in Israel with Trump's face on it. On the other side, they have um, per, the the Persian um, emperor on there that uh, they call him uh, Cyrus. Okay, they call Trump the second Cyrus. They love Trump so much over in Israel. Now, are these Abraham Accords going to get done in two years? I don't know. But as a Bible student, I saw that last night and I'm like, okay, if, if Emmanuel Macron is the son of perdition, which is possible, but it may not be, but it looks like he is because I just want you to read the article that uh, Greider put in here that's going to show you uh, he builds a case for him being a leading candidate and I want you to read that before you, you, a lot of people react emotionally when you make, you know, like um, uh, statements that can trigger people, right? I made a lot of triggering statements tonight, but there's a good reason for it. It's very, I'm, I'm touching on emotional subjects, the, the, the elections, politics, and, and faith-based topics. I don't like to call it religion because... True born-again Christians are not religious. We have a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's based on faith. We're going to get to that. <clears throat> so, it would make it would be a marriage made in heaven to have Benjamin Netanyahu. Half of, half of this is already put together. He's already back in power. He's not going anywhere unless he, you know some, his health goes bad. But I doubt it. He's back. Benjamin Netanyahu is back. If Trump wins in 2024, I think there's, which I think there's a very good chance of that happening. Guess what? Those Abraham Accords are going to get signed. And do you know what that means, ladies and gentlemen? This is why I'm building a case for his chances of being elected very good. Is because 
in those Abraham Accords, the land of Israel gets divided. And Jerusalem, East Jerusalem, is the capital of the Palestinians. And in the Bible, that's a gigantic no-no to God. That's a gigantic no-no. And God gave Israel to, well, let's put it this way. He gave Israel as steward, uh, to the Israeli people as stewards, that land as stewards, until he returns to this earth. But make no mistake about it, that is God's land. So you divide up something that belongs to God, and he says it belongs to him. He's got a problem with that, ladies and gentlemen, especially when you're giving it to, to the Gentiles and, and to these people like the Palestinians and, and um, the Roman Catholics and things like that, okay? I'm building, I'm building the case up here because to me as a Bible student, if you want to know what goes on in my mind when I'm looking at politics and things, I, I try to look at it as much as I can through the lenses of Scripture. And that's why I'm telling you that he has a very good chance of being reelected, no matter what you see for the next two years. If the FBI comes back to Mar-a-Lago and tries to ransack his house again, or they try to indict Trump and... Look, like he said last night in the speech, look for the torrent, okay? He said, into the torrent we go. <laughs> so mainstream media, the gates of hell are, for the next two years, are going to worse than the first time, in my opinion. Worse than the first time. But all I'm asking you to do is cancel out the noise and just, you know, I look through the lenses of scripture and I and I and what I what I the conclusions that I come to when I do that is okay, does this make biblical sense for this to happen? Okay. The other day, before he said that last night, the other day I didn't give him a very good chance of being reelected because I just didn't think, you know, like with all of the corruption that we have in our elections now, with you know. The fraudulent, the fraudulent issues that we have, I thought, no, I, I don't think it looks good, especially, you know, like what happened this month. Idaho crushed it, by the way. We're red. So, you know, I did, I did my part. <laughs> but we crushed it in Idaho. But I'm just saying, like, you know, and then after he said that last night, that reignited my, my hope. Okay. Now, as a Christian, I want to tell people, don't put your hope in world leaders don't put your hope in politicians. Don't even put your hope in Donald Trump fixing this gigantic mess in the world because the Antichrist spirit is not going away. Bible prophecy has to be fulfilled and it's being fulfilled before our very eyes. And I'm telling you, as good of a chance as Mr. Trump has of being reelected, I will also tell you this, is that there is a very good chance that the rapture of the church could happen um, any time between now and the next two years. As a student, I will tell you this. As a Bible student, I will tell you this. To me, I'm not speaking for any other Christian than myself, but when I, I look through the lenses of Scripture, when I say this, some catastrophic events have to happen for the rapture to be triggered. Okay? So if we're not seeing catastrophic things happening on the earth, then the rapture is probably not. We will know when it's near at the very door, it says in the book of Matthew. We'll know when it's, why? Because the rapture is a rescue operation. Would you like some, would you like some uh, biblical proof on that? Glad you asked, okay? So in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17, it says that in, in, in the English, it says that we are caught up Okay, um, uh, it says in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17, it says, For the Lord him, himself shall descend from, the heaven, from heaven with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be, here's the phrase, caught up. That's in English. That's where we get the word rapture from. When people say there is no rapture in the Bible, Caught up is in um, in the King James English, but in in Greek and Hebrew it has different meanings. In Latin, it's rapturo, which is where we get rapture from. Harpazo is Greek; that means caught up. But when you look up those meanings of those names, it means very, very fast. In the in the twinkling of an eye, it's so fast you can't even imagine. 
So the question in my mind as a student, I'm like, why so fast, Lord? Why do, why do you have to take everybody so quickly? And it's obviously because catastrophic events are starting to pound the earth and God has to remove his restraining force off of the earth and he has to re remove us, the body of Christ, off of the earth so that the wrath of God can come down and pound the earth. Because the seven-year cycle, the seven-year dispensation of what which we call the time of Jacob's trouble, which is in the Bible. That's called it, God calls it the time of Jacob's trouble because there's no day like it. It's going to be the worst time in human history because God has had enough of this wickedness and he's going to start judging the world, okay? But he is removing his bride first. So it's very, very fast, which tells me as a student that the reason why it's so fast is because he is plucking his his bride away because he doesn't want his bride to get crushed. Crushed from what? I don't know. But we're going to know when we go up. We're, it could be nuclear exchanges. It could be all kinds of things. It could be earthquakes. I don't know. I'm not going to pretend to know, but I know that all of those things will happen during the time of Jacob's trouble, which we call the seven-year tribulation. Okay, <clears throat> so that could happen between now and, and 2024. If Mr. Trump is reelected, and those Abraham Accords get signed, the land of Israel gets divided, and God, as I'm telling you, is serious as a heart attack. He is going to be very angry about that, and you can read that about that in the book of Isaiah. It's called the covenant of death and hell, dividing the land. God says, you divided my land. You're, you've made lies your refuge. Okay? And it, it's, it's corrupted politicians in Israel that are going to do this. Believe me, they have their, their, their share of corrupted politicians in Israel, just like we have our share. We're just a bigger version of it. But, you know, they have their corrupted politicians over there. And there's hints of why in, in Scripture. And I've shared this on, on other occasions. And, and there's drop hints in Scripture about why these people in Israel would sign the, these Abraham Accords. And it's, if you want to know where the Abraham Accords are in the Bible... It's in Daniel 9.27. I'm very convinced that the Abraham Accords are, are, are listed in Daniel 9.27. But Antichrist will come along, just like Joe Biden came along later, and some of these other world politicians, to try to change the Abraham Accords to the way they want it. Antichrist will come forward in, in a, sometime in the future and change the Abraham Accords to the way he wants it to be changed. And you can read that in Daniel 9.27. Getting back to these Israeli politicians, God says they drink too much alcohol. Okay, they drink too much. He said they're drunk all the time. They're intoxicated. That's in scripture. And he's talking about these politicians that we have now, not from 2,000 years ago or 3,000 years ago or whenever. No, he's talking about a future generation of politicians in Israel that have no leader, but they're, they're intoxicated. They drink too much. They probably are partying. You know, they're... They're probably my age, right? They're like grown-up children. They're very smart people, but, you know, like, I don't know. You see, our, our politicians always get caught going to nightclubs all the time, getting partying and getting drunk. Um, there was one, I forgot which state it was in, but she's a liberal. And there was her and this other politician, I think it was in Sweden. She was like the prime minister of Sweden. She was younger than me. Good-looking girl, by the way. And she was caught in a nightclub without her mask on during the mandates. And, and, you know, we're all supposed to wear masks back then, you know? Well, she was partying it up without wearing her mask. And, and so I'm just telling you is that these people, these politicians, don't think they don't party. They like to party and get drunk and, and probably do a lot of other things more intoxicating, all right, than alcohol. So maybe they're doing something else, you know? Yeah, there you go, Scott. Good point. He's, Scott brings up Nancy Pelosi. Where is she at? You know, she's over, she's over drinking somewhere. She's, she loves to, she loves to sauce it up. <laughs> she, she's got a lot of reasons to drink now. Like her husband got beat up by hit, by uh, her husband's boyfriend and um, both caught in their underwear in a hammer fight. And then, uh, um, yeah, they can both drink alcohol now and do whatever they do behind closed doors. You know, kind of interesting, isn't it? All right. So. I laid out my case for that. Now let's do this. We're going to change direction dramatically. We're going to talk about something here. Are you ready? Anybody that's here, 
if you hate Christianity, now would be a good time to leave. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I want you to stay. All right. The whole purpose we do these Bible studies really is to help the lost get saved. So hate me now, hate me tomorrow, hate me whatever, but don't leave yet. Because I've got something to share with lost people. And I've got something to share with the body of Christ. And it's a poll that I made today. Are you ready? Let's do this. Okay. Let me find it. <laughs> Here was the question. Are you ready? Question of the day. And listen, you're welcome to give me your answer in chat if you want to as well. I'm fine with it. I took a temperature reading today. This is what I did. A temperature reading of the climate of people's thoughts and what, what, what's on their mind. You know, what are they thinking, right? The, out here in Facebook land and wherever else I put this video. Uh, Bible teacher, um, Christian, Bible student, um, someone who loves Jesus Christ, I want you to understand that uh, you got work to do, okay? Like, this is going to give you, you're going to be able to put your finger on this when I read this, and you're going to go, oh, wow, okay? Because I talk about this a lot. Thank you, Sister Diana. I, I appreciate having you here and love having you here as much as you love being in the on the video with me. So thank you for that. The question of the day was, if you know about Jesus, once you're saved, are you always saved? Leave me your comments. Thank you. So the question was for the whole Facebook world. I said, if you know, I didn't say if you have a relationship with Jesus. I just said, if you know about Jesus. I was tricky with this one. I said, if you know about Jesus, once you're saved, are you always saved? Okay, well, let me just uh, read some, some of the replies. Are you ready? Here we go. <laughs> Patrick says, I think I ha have to, H-A-F-T, I have to die first. Actually, Patrick, somebody died a long time ago for you. He died first before you did, or will, or all of us, if we're not raptured. He died for you first so that you would not have to die. There's a saying that I like. It's called, if you're born once, you're going to die twice. If you're born twice, you're only going to die once. Okay? So, Patrick, I'm not picking on you. But if you're born twice, you will die only one time. Unless, if you're not raptured. But if you get saved, if you are saved, you're going to... Uh, you'll, only, you'll only die naturally in this life one time. And you're going straight to heaven. Donna, Donna says, I ask for forgiveness every day. Donna, that's a great thing that you do. And it's a good... It's like... Before I go to sleep every night, I go and, I mean, I brush my teeth a couple times a day. Um, but before I go to sleep, I like to brush my teeth and because I like my teeth to be clean before I go to sleep. Well, asking for forgiveness every day as a born-again Bible-believing Christian is a very healthy, good thing to do because we're all sinners. The Bible says we've all fallen short of the glory of God. Nick says... Everyone finds out the answer in the end. Actually, Nick, the answers are in scriptures. In the scriptures. Excuse me. They're in the Bible. We don't need to know in the end. We're, we can know right now. I had a uh, Satanist come on to my uh, Facebook uh, the other day when I posted about learning Hebrew. And, of course, he was a mocker. And, you know, he... Um, call this like believing in a fairy tale God and stuff like that, you know? And, uh, I mean, I'm not going to give him too much of a moment here, but, uh, you know, I said, you know, I didn't even know he was a Satanist until later in the chat, other people started to talk to him. And, and I said, man, I like, how old are you? You know, are you, are you still talking like, like a child or, or are you going to be an adult and stop ridiculing other people's faith and beliefs, you know? Um, and, and, uh, because, you know, honestly, uh, 
a fairy tale God, you know, without a bunch of proofs, so I go down this rabbit trail of uh, trying to prove to somebody that has no interest in, in God to make them a Christian. That's not what we do. We plant seeds and we do not, um, we're not supposed to contend with scoffers, ladies and gentlemen. So, um, we don't find out the answer in the end. The Bible tells us you must be born again to see the kingdom of God. John 3, 3. Terry, Sister Terry, I'm surprised at this answer, Terry. I don't think so. I ask for forgiveness for my past a lot. Terry, hold that thought. We're going to address this in a few minutes. I'm going to read, a, I can't read all these comments. There's too many of them, but I'm going to read a few more. Alice says, no. Stephanie Armstrong says, I believe so. Stephanie, you're on to something. Aunt Angel Decker Corey says, once saved, always save. No. It's like everything else, you can mess it up. You have to have a relationship with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ every day. Now I want to I want to tell people something. What Angel just said is probably what the majority of people think that uh, I am not I am not saying they're saved or I'm not saved or anything like that. I'm not saying that they're not going to heaven. But Satan has gotten into the minds of so many people thinking that, oh, I have to walk on eggshells the rest of my life because if I mess up and I was to die messed up, that God would not take me. I'd be going on my way to hell. I have met so many people, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, I, you know what? A little bit later, I'm going to repost this in this video tonight so that you can see all of the answers. But the majority of the answers are... There are ways, Danny says, there's ways you can lose that. Um, Sherry got it right. She says, absolutely. I am part of him. I'm in his hand. I'm already seated in heavenly places this very moment. I'm born again. Boom. Awesome. Listen to Sherry, guys and gals. Listen to Sherry. Sherry got a bing, bing, bing price is right. She got it correct. I could keep on going, okay? I could keep on going. But the majority of the people that gave me the answers think that they can lose their salvation. Now, do you want to know why I believe that once you're saved, you're always saved? Once you're saved, once you have the knowledge of Jesus Christ and have a relationship with him, that you will never lose your salvation? is because of the born again experience. Because what you can't do on your own, um, sir or, or miss or ma'am or, or brother or sister, what you can't accomplish on your own, Jesus Christ did it for you. He did all of the work for you. Um, a born again experience means this. There's a lot of Christians running around some of them, they have the title Christian that have never had a born-again experience. They went through a ritual. It's so important to get this right, guys, because when you are truly saved, when you're truly going to heaven, there's a transformation that happens, not physically, but spiritually inside of you, is that the Holy Spirit comes into you and he lives inside of you. And that's your new roommate. And he is with you to the very end. Now, <clears throat> is he going to convict you when you sin? Yes. Is he going to condemn you when you sin? No. <laughs> but if you continue in sin as a Christian, as a born-again Christian, if you continue in sin, you're going to get chastened. You're going to get corrected. You could you could fall down. You could you could destroy your own body. Okay. And you could suffer from your own stupid mistakes, the decisions that you make and grieving the Holy Spirit and all of that. But when you die, you're still going to heaven because you had a born again experience. Now, the correction God, the, the Lord says in the Bible, God says, I chasten those I love. You love him, he loves you. That love is never going to stop. Let me read this. 
I'm going to read this for you, okay? Let me, I'll, I'll, I'll put this link in chat after we're, uh, after we're finished with this. This comes from Christianity.com. What is a born-again Christian? Okay. The phrase born-again Christian applies to people who have accepted Jesus as their Savior or Redeemer. To be born again in this sense is not an actual physical rebirth, but it indicates a spiritual rebirth. What you used to love yesterday, you won't love anymore. You'll hate it. I mean, destructive, sinful things, all right? That's what I'm talking about here. Why? Because God's living in your, inside of you. He hates it. He hates, he, God hates sin, ladies and gentlemen. Read the story in the Gospels where Jesus came and when he, when he got to the temple, he started turning over the money changers and all of that. And he said, you've made this a den of thieves. You've made, you've made, um, you've made the Lord's house a den of thieves. He would, he, he, that was a temple and your body is a temple. And when you're doing destructive, sinful things as a born again Christian, he's going to start turning those tables over in your life. And saying, I don't like that. You've got to stop doing that. You don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. And this is what I'm telling you, okay? So, um, let me do this. All right, I love this one. This is what I quote all the time. In the story of John chapter 3 with Nicodemus, when Nicodemus, he's a Pharisee. He was a Pharisee that loved Jesus, okay? Not all the Pharisees obviously loved Jesus. They wanted to kill him. But this one, there was some Pharisees that knew who he, who he was. <clears throat> and Nicodemus was one of them. And he said, we, knew, we know that you came from God. You know, a lot of us know that you came from God. And guess what? Nicodemus said the magic words. He said the magic words. And Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Please let that sink into your spirit tonight. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb and be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water, which is the physical birth, and of the spirit, which is a spiritual rebirth. You know, it's really sad today that a lot of the body of Christ has to do these. I mean, I actually, it's sad, but it's not sad that we have to go online and do this. And then they don't even talk about this in a lot of churches today about having a born again experience. It's le God has left it up to his people, you and me, to be out here doing these things, to teach a lost and dying world what it actually means to escape the, 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 the time that's coming on this earth. And, and if you were to die tonight, that you can know for sure that you're going to heaven, that if you stumble, if you fall, God is not going to let you, he's not, you're not going to be snatched out of his hand. You're going to heaven. Okay? I don't mind doing it. I'm fine doing it. It doesn't bother me at all. And um, the Lord will sift my life when that time comes at the judgment seat of Christ. And, you know, and it's going to, whatever's going to happen will happen, but at least I'll be saved. I'll be there. And I'll know that I tried to do the right thing. And, and you know, like most of the time, that's all God wants of us, is to try to do the right thing and to be found faithful, okay? To be found faithful. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. We'll get to that in the prayer at the end of this video, okay? How to be born again. How did, David, how does it, what does it mean to be born again? The phrase born again applies to people who have accepted Jesus as their Savior and Redeemer, the born-again soul realizes that they're a sinner, and that's in Romans 3.23. People are like, why do I need Jesus? Because you've got a sin virus, bud. That's why. Because we, we were all born with it. All right? You can be in denial if you want about it, but have you ever lied before? Have you ever thought unnatural thoughts before? You know, like, let's say that you're a man and you look at a woman, you know, and I'm not saying that's unnatural, but, I mean, you start taking her clothes off with your eyes, right? I mean... Those are things that we should be refraining from doing. We shouldn't be doing drugs. We shouldn't be uh, drinking so much alcohol that we get drunk. Um, we shouldn't be gossiping and backbiting our neighbor. We shouldn't be slandering people. We shouldn't be lying. We shouldn't be coveting. You know, like 
it's all of those, it's all of those things. Okay. So like, if you're honest with yourself and, and, and you're like, well, so what? That's my version of right and to me. Well, the problem with that version that you have of whatever you think is right in your own mind, it leads to death. God says that. There is a way that seems right to man, but the end thereof leads to death. That's why the Bible says that, okay? Everybody has walks in the way that they think is right to them, but God guarantees you that that way leads unto death. In the book of Job, uh, Job said that, as a fire cracks, crackles up, crackles up. So do so do uh, man getting into trouble. That it's just as it's just as sure that it's going to happen. That man gets himself into trouble. That's why you need God. That's why you need the Holy Spirit living within you. You need every advantage that you've got in this world, ladies and gentlemen. Because if you have the Lord Jesus Christ, it wouldn't matter if my house burned down tonight. I'd be upset about it, but I mean, I've got God still, and He's going to look after me. So we're born with a sin virus and God is a holy and righteous God and he makes no mistakes and he requires payment for sin. And that's the one that you have to stand before <clears throat> on the day of judgment. Whether it's the judgment seat of Christ or whether it's the great white throne judgment. And I mentioned this the other day, you do not want to show up at the great white throne judgment, ladies and gentlemen. If you do, if you're standing there, Christians, you will not be standing at the great white throne judgment. If you mess up tonight, you're not going there. If you had a born-again experience, you will go to heaven, okay? Your works are going to be evaluated at the judgment seat of Christ, and you will get rewards or loss, but you will not lose your soul, okay? Sherry, good to see you. Thank you for coming on tonight. I'm, I'm happy that you're here. Um, uh, we uh, were talking about the born-again Bible-believing experience, Sherry. Born-again experience, according to the scriptures, okay? Um, the penalty for sin is death, Romans 6, 23. To rectify the circumstances, God sent his only son to die in their place to take the punishment of sin, Romans 5, 8. Chapter 5, verse 8. After Jesus' death, he rose from the dead, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 through 6. Jesus is the only way to God. There is no other way, ladies and gentlemen. There's no one world religion. There's no pope. There's no priest. There's no bishop in Salt Lake City, Utah, and the Romans. There's no Ellen G. White with um, a Jehovah Witness or any of that. Mormonism, none of it. Um, New Age, anything. Satanism, you're really lost. Okay? You, it, doctrines of demons, all of it. It's all going... It, the, all those people that die in that condition, I'm not their judge. But the Bible pretty much lets us know where they're going. Okay? We're not their judge. But the Bible tells us where these people go. Jesus is the only way to God, John 14, 6. And, and he provides the blessing of salvation. You want to know what? That's not to be taken lightly. Salvation is a gigantic blessing, blessing because your soul is the most valuable thing that you own. It's not your bank account. It's not this, this country. It's not the United States of America. It's not your house. It's not your car. It's not even your kids. It's not even your husband or your wife or your boyfriend or your girlfriend, which you think maybe is the most important thing ever to you. Your soul is the most important thing that you own. And God says salvation is a blessing. The salvation of your soul. Jesus came to die for the salvation of your soul. And it's a free gift. All you have to do is call out to him for that free gift. He provides a blessing of salvation. Each person has a choice to receive or reject God's gift through faith. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. And experience the new birth. And that's John 3, 1 through 8. Whoever follows Jesus as Christ, the Son of God, has accepted his gift of life and can be called a Christian. That is what the journey of the rebirth means. I used to have people like put stupid screen names on, on, on their profiles back in like the early 2000s and late 90s and and they were putting like abominations along to the next in the name of Jesus and thinking that that's okay. God's going to accept me for who I am and what I am. You can let your imagination run wild with you on that. And I called these frauds out and I said, look, you, you can't live that lifestyle and think that's okay with God and that he's going to take you and you're going to heaven. 
you're not going to heaven in that condition. And they came after me. They threatened me with death. They threatened me whatever. And I'm like, bring it on, dude. Bring it on. Like, you want to come to my house? Come on to my house. And then let's see how, let's see you face to face. Anyway, that was back then. Okay. But, <laughs> but anyway, what I'm saying is there's people living a lie. There's frauds. Okay. Good night, sister Diane. Get a good rest. And I will see you tomorrow, probably in the group or in chat. Okay. There's frauds out there that are playing Christian, that are that never had a born-again experience. It's not a license to sin to be born again. It's not a license. We don't plan to do it. We don't want to do it. We hate it when we fall. And just like before I go to bed at night and I brush my teeth before I go to bed, I ask, I try to ask for forgiveness of my sins, you know, okay? But that's not the born-again experience. The born-again experience is calling out to Jesus Christ and asking him to forgive you, actually, that you believe what he did for you on the cross. Okay, so let's do that right now. Let's do this right now. Lord, whoever watches this video tonight, I know I talked about the possibilities of Donald Trump's re-election, I think are, they're good. I don't know if that's the direction you're going to take our nation, but it won't take long to find out. It's going to be a crazy two years. I don't even know if, we're going to be here for that, Lord. You could come and rapture your your church before this ever finishes. And and so, but I know the signs to look for, Lord, and what you, you've told me through your word. So I'm awake to it. I'm paying attention. I pray that other people on Facebook and social media, wherever this video is going to go out, that they start, if they are not paying attention, that they start paying attention and and try to get their life in order and to try to put you as a priority in their life. And Start thinking the, your thoughts instead of their own. And it's not easy, Lord. I know that our flesh gets in the way and we, we think selfish thoughts a lot. I have to lay it all bare before you, Lord, because you know my thoughts, you know my actions, you know my deeds, and you know everybody else's. And I can't hide anything from you. So you know, like, but it is, the, you said in the Garden of Gethsemane to your disciples, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And so you know that our flesh is weak. We fall but thank God for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, that you sent the Holy Spirit to come and live inside of us, to strengthen us, to comfort us, to guide us in all truth, it says in the book of John, that your Holy Spirit would guide us in all truth. And I rely on that a great, great deal. I rely on that, that you give me my discernment. I'm not always right about everything, but you are, Lord, you're right about everything. And I always pray for your discernment in all of these situations, whether it's in politics ministries that have agendas and i'm not saying they all do but some do and they put on a nice face for everybody when there's all kinds of things going on in that ministry that's not pleasing to you i have my own little small ministry here lord and you know the areas of my life that i need to work better on and i i want to do that but i want to learn hebrew for you uh and i pray in these nine months if we're if i'm still here next year that I'll get to finish that and have have a certificate that says I graduated. But I pray for people that don't know you tonight. So audience, if you don't know Jesus Christ, very, very important to get that out uh, squared away as soon as possible. Don't put it off. This is your invitation right now. Call out to Jesus Christ. He's with us in this video. Doesn't matter if it's a post video or it's live or whatever. When you're watching it right now, all you do is you call upon him. All who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He's right here with me. He's here with you right now. And he has his hands extended to you. Okay. In the book of Revelation, it says, I stand at the door and knock. That's for the Laodicean church. Uh, but we can still use that analogy that he is knocking on the heart of your door. Uh, he's knocking on the door of your heart. I'm sorry. Knocking on the door of your heart. Let, open the door and just let him come in. Let him come in because you know what? I'm going to tell you why. His yoke is easy. He says, put my yoke upon you. My yoke is easy to bear. The Bible says the way of the transgressor is hard. Those who reject me, their life is hard. It doesn't matter how much money you've got. It doesn't matter, what, you know, like you think you're cool or you're a young person and I've got all this strength and I'm beautiful or I'm handsome and I got it going on. Satan can come and take it away just like that. 
if God re loosens up the leash on the devil and the demons, you could die in a car accident tonight. You could expire tonight. I always knew this even when I was in my 20s or in a teenager. I feared God from day one. As, as early as I knew God, I feared him. And he had mercy on me because of it. It says in, it says in the book of Proverbs, it says the beginning of not, uh, wisdom is the be, uh, fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Okay. You want, you want to have a reverent fear of the Lord. Okay. A reverent fear. And you want to call out to him and he will save you. I promise you. You call out to him and you say, Lord, I believe I'm choosing to believe what you did for me on the cross and say it with your mouth. It can be in the privacy of your home, your bedroom, in your car, wherever you are. And just call upon him and say, add this also. I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm not perfect. Whatever these Christians they call in the Bible a sin, I know I've made mistakes in my life. If you count that as sin, then I'm going to choose to believe that. I ask you to forgive me. Please come into my life. And also, Lord, if you would be so gracious to write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life, which is an official document in heaven that says, I belong here as my future home. And guess what else, guys? Not only will your soul be redeemed, but you will have a mansion waiting for you in heaven. It's going to be a mansion specifically for you. Jesus said that he went away to prepare a mansion for us. And if he goes away to do that, that he would come again and receive us unto himself. So you're going to have a mansion based on your taste, your likes, and it's going to be better than any mansion that ever that a man could ever build here on the earth. You're going to get to see lost love. You're going to be seeing loved ones that you lost or ancestors from the past that were died in Jesus Christ. You're going to get to see them. And there's going to be relatives that I have in heaven that I never even knew that I had. I'm going to get to meet them. I'm going to get to see my parents. And we're going to have a great big feast. At the rapture of the church, we're going to have a big feast. Where first of all, have you ever had an old pair of shoes? And you bought a new pair of shoes and you look really good in those new pair of shoes or that new dress or that new um, workout outfit that you wanted to buy or, or a new car. You trade your old clunker in for a really nice car and you're, you're all happy it's sitting out in the driveway. Well, guess what? At the rapture of the church, you're going to receive a glorified body. You're not God. There's only one God. But you're going to have a glorified body like Jesus Christ said that he has. And you're going to be able to do things that are absolutely incredible. And your intellect is going to be increased. And you're going to learn to speak Hebrew in a flash. You won't need to go to school for it like I do. You will learn. You will know Hebrew. Most likely, you will know Hebrew. God's language is Hebrew, ladies and gentlemen. He spoke to Moses on the mountain in Hebrew. Okay? Jesus Christ came to this earth as a Jewish carpenter. Just so that you know. <laughs> All right? Lord, thank you. I, I think that somebody got saved. I don't know who. But I feel it in my spirit, and I'm so grateful for that, Lord. Um, please come soon. We want you to come. But we also, I know that I could speak for myself, I want your plan to be fulfilled exactly like it's supposed to be. So no matter what I want, whether I want to leave now or tomorrow, or I want your plan to be fulfilled. I want your will first before mine. So however long that you have me here, it's fine with me. And we're going to continually, patiently wait until that last soul is saved, before the seven-year tribulation begins. And we will keep preaching the word, we will keep opening the scriptures, and we will keep studying, which is what you want us to do, 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a worker who need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. All the glory to you, Lord, until you come, in Jesus' name, amen. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's what I got for you tonight. Be encouraged, all right? No matter whether Mr. Trump is our president in 2024 or not, it doesn't matter because Jesus is the king. He's coming back soon. And if you got that squared with him, he's the best king that we will ever have for all eternity. He will be righteous. He won't allow fraud. There won't be elections when he's here. He's going to be 
He's going to be a military dictator in the beginning, and I love it because we need we need a righteous military dictator to come and clean up this mess that we got going on on the earth. All right? So share the video if you feel led to do so. If not, it will go where it's supposed to go. I wish you all a blessed evening. Whenever you watch this video, I'll see you next time. Take care.